Okay, so let's look at the uh, Cobalt Strike UI. Uh, first, we need to open Putty and connect to the Kali VM. Uh, you can say yes to this. And let's make this font a bit bigger. 16, I'm sure that's fine. Okay, and I'll start Tmux and then uh, CD into opt Cobalt Strike. And in here you'll find a bunch of files. Don't need to worry about most of them for now. Uh, to run the team server, we just do team server. And then you give it the uh, public IP or whatever IP that the team server will listen on. In this case, it's 10, 10, 5, 1, 20, which is the IP address of the Kali VM. And then you'll want to give it a password. And now this is the, this is a shared password. So every operator or client that will connect to the team server will use the same password. So let's hit enter. And it will uh, show you this hash here, which is quite important. So the communication between the Cobalt Strike client and the team server is encrypted over SSL. And uh, when we open the uh, Cobalt Strike GUI, we get this connect window. Um, I've already filled in my connection details here. So we put the uh, IP address of the Kali VM, uh, port 550 is the default. Uh, the username can be whatever you like. So I am, let's do raster mouse. And then the password is the shared password that you just entered. And hit connect. And the client will tell you the, uh, it'll give you the SSL fingerprint of the uh, team server and you just have to make sure that the uh, fingerprints match. And this is just to make sure that nobody is um, uh, man in the middling between uh, your client and the team server. So this looks correct, so we hit yes. And the client will remember that fingerprint now. Every time you connect to that VM, it'll remember the fingerprint. So it, you don't have to do that every time but it would prompt you if it changed. So pretty much the first thing we have to do is start a listener. And you can do that using the little headphone icon here or go to Cobalt Strike Listeners. And this pane in the middle, you can uh, move up and down. And uh, let's hit add. Uh, there are lots of different types as you can see but we're just going to do the vegan http for now and we'll give it a name and the name has to be uh, descriptive um, in lots of the cobalt strike workflows you will reference the listener name so the name has you know you have to be able to recognize what the listener is from the name um, so what I generally tend to do is give it like the protocol and then maybe the port or something like that, but it's really up to you. Um, in HTTP hosts, we hit add and we're just gonna have one callback host for now, which is um, our Kali VM and everything else we can leave as default and hit save. Okay, and now the team server, term, uh, team server is listening on port 80. Now, if you want to, uh, if this isn't what you wanted and you want to change it, you can um, highlight it here and edit it or remove it. The next thing we want to do is to generate a payload. So we can go to attacks packages and we'll do windows executable stageless. And every payload is tied to a listener because really it just 
when you generate a payload, it needs to know uh, which listener it's going to try and communicate with. So we choose uh, our HTTP listener, and then in the output, I'm just going to keep it as Windows executable and 64-bit. Generate. And we can save this in C payloads. Overwrite this one I've already got. Uh, Beacon HTTP. Okay. Uh, and to run that, we can just do C payloads beacon HTTP. And then we see the beacon has appeared, which is very nice. And the, uh, maybe the first thing you'll see is this last column here. And the way the beacons work is that they will communicate out to the team server and check to see if it's got any uh, jobs or commands it needs to execute. Um, and then it will sleep for a predetermined amount of time. Uh, by default, they will sleep for one minute. Uh, to interact with the beacon, we right click it and say interact. And what I'm quickly gonna do is just change the sleep time with the sleep command and we'll set it to five seconds. And what you'll see is on 60 seconds, it'll check in and it'll process this job that we gave it, which is to change the sleep time. And now it's sleeping for every five seconds. So whilst the beacon is sleeping, you can't interact with it in any way. It's not going to um, send any output or, or do anything. And uh, whilst it's actually sleeping, you can, you can issue it commands but uh, the beacon won't actually fetch them until the next time it checks in. Uh, so to get a list of commands, we can just type help. The help uh, command is not subject to the beacon check-in, so you can do this anytime. And we see a list of uh, commands and a short description for each one. If you want to make this text bigger, what you can do is hold control and press the uh, plus button. And likewise, the minus button will make it smaller. For um, any of these commands, we can get more details. So we could say like help um, upload. And it will generally give us um, a use and a description. If we do something like help inject, you can see that some arguments are wrapped in the square brackets whilst others are in the uh, pointy brackets. Uh, these in the square brackets are mandatory and these are optional. Um, if you don't specify an optional argument, it will Pick a default, and I think in this case the default is x86, which is something you generally don't want. So just be mindful that just because something is de um, something is optional doesn't mean you don't want to, uh, you know, fill it in. So let's interact with this beacon a bit more. Let's say get UID, which is a bit like who am I. And you can see there that the beacon remained tasked until it checked in. And then when it checks in, it downloads the job, it executes it, and then it sends the results back. So we're administrator on the Windows dev machine. We can do uh, like print working directory. We can do C CD, LS, and so on. If you want to clear the window, you can do Control K, 
and it will just uh, flush that buffer temporarily. These tabs you can do all sorts with if you right click on the on the little cross. You have a few options like rename, so you could say like admin um, at Windows Dev. Um, of course, if you if you close um, a tab and then open it, like everything kind of resets the default. So the font size resets the default, the tab name resets the default. You can also switch views. So at the moment, this is the list view, which is um, activated this by this icon here. Cobalt Strike has a really nice graph view. which will display um, all of your beacons in like a hierarchical graph. So if you have, uh, you know, different beacons that spawn off each other in, in a chain, uh, that's a really nice visual, vis visualization. You can right click in here and you can change the layout. So let's say you want it like top to bottom or something like that. You can do that. The uh, default is left tree. Another useful feature is the uh, send to bottom. So we can say, if we're like working on um, our beacons here and we have a web log that we wanna keep an eye on, you can see that this event log uh, is highlighted in blue, which means that it has events in there that we haven't read yet. If we click into it, the initial beacon was the event that we hadn't read. And if we go back, it's no longer blue. But if you want to keep an eye on the content of something whilst you're working in the beacon, you can right click and say send to bottom. And then, uh, you know, whilst you're working in here, you can just keep an eye on it. So if we do something like New object net dot web client download string stp ten ten five one twenty test yeah four or four not found surprise surprise but you can see uh, the output appears here whilst you're working on this. So it can be pretty flexible depending on your, you know, your style and that kind of thing. If you want to exit a beacon, you can just type exit. Alternatively, you can right click and go session and exit. And then once the beacon has sent back a confirmation that it's been closed, uh, you can't see it too well here, but the icon kind of goes faded. Can see there it's a little bit faded um, but they will stay here until you go to session remove and then they will disappear you can also and let's spawn this again If you have a beacon that's running and still checking in, you can still remove it, uh, but the beacon is still running. And the next time that beacon checks in, it will just pop up again in the UI. And there we go. Now, one of the things that the Cobalt Right client also has is several like more graphical ways to interact with the beacon. So for example, if we go to process list, uh, 
and um, nothing will happen until the beacon checks in. Okay, there we go. So you get this nice uh, visual tree of the uh, of all the processes that are running. And if you um, like click one of them in here, they'll highlight in the tree and vice versa. And then these buttons down here provide um, a little shortcut for some of the commands that you can run. So you could highlight a process here and then click inject or you know log keystrokes or steal the token. And inject is just a little wrapper around the inject command. Um, so if you if you click inject here, you choose a payload, and then you uh, click like choose, and it will inject a beacon payload for that listener into this process. And that can be you know easier depending you know again depending on your style. Instead of doing like PS and then finding the process, and you know, this is nice because you can click these and sort by like name and or user, so on, so on, and then having to find the PID and then saying like inject, I don't know, whatever, one, two, three, four and then the architecture, and then the listener. Now these do auto-complete, so you can hit H and then tab, and it will also complete the listeners for you. But there you go. A couple of different ways to interact with the beacons. And um, there's no right or wrong way. It's up to you and your style and whatever you prefer. So I encourage you to go ahead and uh, try and get familiar with the UI, play around with it, see what you like and what you don't like, and get a good feel for it. And that's the end of this video.